You're the one who wanted me to watch this. Why are you mad? Oh, you're mad now? Okay. Okay. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Amanda Ray. I escaped the polygamous cults, and now I'm talking about polygamous cults. Cults, 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 cults. We're gonna be watching the Knife in the Kidneys episode. It's Sister Wives season 17, episode 10. So this is now the fourth episode that we are reviewing together as a family, as a unit. I am the man of the house. Just kidding. I should have done the Kota hair, but honestly, my hair is... It's recovering still from the noodles. So I've not watched this. We're gonna find it. And, and those of you that are new here, you know, this is the name of the game. We have wine out. This is a red wine. It's bread and butter. Um, I have not tried bread and butter. Well, I've tried bread and butter's white wine, not this red one. Remember last time we did white? You don't care. Anyways, I'll let you know if it's good or not. Um, we're gonna be reviewing this Sister Wives video. And if I get triggered, uh, I, I drink the wine. It, it's fun if you haven't been here before. I'm drunk at the end of the video. <sighs> Is it fun? Okay, yeah, so we watched the very first episode of season one. We watched It's Over, 17, season 17, episode one. We watched, and then there were three, which is the fourth episode. Oh, it's, the episode's actually called The Knife and the Kidneys. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna set this down. And I feel like in the last episode I was squinting a lot, so maybe I'm gonna go get my glasses. <laughs> Hello? Let's do Previously this. on Sister Wives. Isabel's moving to North Carolina. There's nothing that can prepare you to say goodbye. It's super cool that Maddie, Janelle's daughter, and Isabel, my daughter, are super close. They're raised with this big, huge family and this big, huge family picture. But by leaving Cody, I'm really changing the dynamic. When I tell you that keeps me up at night, believe me, that keeps me up at night. Make sure you're showing your best side. <laughs> Jen and I just have this awesome relationship where we just laugh. I've had those kind of relationships within my family before, but my family is kind of weird right now and it feels good to matter to somebody. Cody, Mary, Janelle, and Robin are all coming over because I need to tell them that my house is now under contract. I'm angry about Christine leaving the family. We never made an official agreement. We never went to our church leaders and said, hey, we're divorced. You know, would they even allow us a divorce? I was sitting there talking with Truly, and she's like, well, you and I are divorced. It was a little bit news to me. Technically, until Christine is physical with another man, she's not divorced. Context here, but oh my, we're one minute in, we're pouring this wine. I don't even know if the church will allow us to get the ch the church. Who you guys never even got legally married? It's a <laughs> it, it, I have so many words. I have so many words. Okay, one, uh, the fact that Cody had the balls to say, like, will the church even allow us to get divorced? And like, we gotta dissect that. So the church has. If the church gets to say who gets divorced, the church gets to have some say in who gets married too. Can we agree on that? If the church is, is like, oh, you can't get divorced, they also are saying, oh, you can't get married. I, I fully believed that a lot of these marriages were uh, manipulation of the church, coercion of the church. I 100% like that. I mean, polygamy in general. It was all the church is doing in like, you gotta live polygamy to get the celestial kingdom. I guarantee you they all believe in celestial kingdom polygamy. Ugh. I'm already out of breath. Hang on, I, I mean, I'm parched. And then Robin, technically you're not divorced until you're with another man. What about if a woman sleeps with another man while she's married? Does that mean she's divorced? What about if a, a woman wants to, I have so many, I'm maybe I shouldn't be judging too much because maybe there was more to that story, but I'm triggered, I'm livid. I want to slap you both with both my hands. <laughs> Okay, we'll wait to slap you until we let you explain yourself. Oh, you guys are right. This is, this is a lot. I have, I have become a little disappointed in Mary. I have, and I really have grown to love Janelle and Christine. I honestly didn't like Christine in the beginning. I'm like, you always wanted to be a third, third wife. Great. I knew a lot of girls like that in the order that bothered me. Ugh, and Cody's always annoyed me, as per usual. So Christine's got the five of us gathered together. 
her house is under contract, it's being sold, and she has just told us that she's moving in a week. This is a very difficult conversation. A year ago when I looked at mine and Cody's relationship and just wasn't, really felt like I couldn't stay, that I hadn't quite decided to move and to leave. And I looked at our relationship, how I was, I just got to thinking, it's not a relationship I would wish on any friend of mine. But you said you didn't want to be married to me anymore when we were talking about moving to Utah. So that, that conversation, I thought, my interpretation of the conversation was at the end of the conversation, I thought that you might be on team we can move. Polygamy got decriminalized. And I wonder why we're still here. Okay, so so I actually know about this. I I was at the rally that they went to, the HB99 rally for decriminalizing polygamy. I'm pretty sure that's what they're talking about. I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, polygamist, but the polygamist group I came from, nobody ever got prosecuted for living polygamy. And there were men that went to prison, like Jacob Kingston, like David Kingston, like Jeremy Kingston, all went to prison for like incest or tax fraud. But, and it was known that they were polygamists and they didn't get an extra slap for polygamy. Like, I don't, I never recall anyone getting prosecuted for living polygamy other than like way back when Utah was trying to become a state, way back in the day. Uh, I'm just piece, piecing things together. I don't really fully understand why they decided to, but may, maybe it's because I didn't watch episodes of, of Utah people being mean to them. I don't know. Yeah, so I saw him at the rally for the decriminalized, I'm pretty sure it was the HB99. And I was at the Capitol and I was like, had a sign on the opposing side. This dude gets up and he's bald and he had like four wives and he's like, they, they want to tell us that in Utah here that our wives are our concubines. And I remember being so mad and I was like, that's what the Bible calls it. I was, I was livid that day. Because why is this bald guy up here talking about how he should be able to be with all of his women? And I asked him, we, we, we all like interviewed this dude and we we're like, what about these Kingstons that are living polygamy with their siblings? And he justified it saying, well, it's because they, ha they have to live polygamy with their siblings because it's not welcome outside of that. Because we're being pr pr prosecuted. Shut up. And of course, the rally was all white people. Why do you think that is? Because they're racist, okay? You're not going to see Asian. You're not going to see Hispanic. You're not going to see, you're not going to see anything but white, okay? There's been times where there's like a rare case of like someone's family that like someone over here is like kind of welcome into the family and they have a little bit of Italian bloodline or something like that, but they're, they, they're racist against them too. At least in my group, even the, the, even just like the distant Italian bloodlines were like not allowed. They can come to church and work for them and make them money, but don't you dare marry our woman and try to, you know what I mean? Sorry, I could go on and on and on. And you're not getting prosecuted for living polygamy. So stop acting like you guys. That's gaslighting, I swear. Stop acting like you guys are the ones that people are being mean to. You're the ones that aren't letting anyone into your groups. You don't want to be a part of society. So stop trying to be. Oh, ah! I'm surprised because I thought Cody was more in favor of this. Mary, I can't do marriage with Cody anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to do it anymore. Were no, you I'm open sorry. to it? Were you open to moving, Cody? I didn't want to move. I like the idea of living in Utah. I don't like the idea of moving. To me, he no. was open to no. Utah. What, the but end of the conversation. What, but I wonder, isn't sorry. this bigger than just that? Yeah, I mean, this oh, is yeah. bigger it's than just that. Bigger. This wasn't just about the move to Utah. No. This wasn't just about... It was just one of those things where I was like, am I really just on my own already? That's just what it felt like. Because I thought before, like, really, honestly, he was giddy when we talked about moving to you. No, 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 I, no, I remember no, no. it different. It's fine. I mean. He always remembers it differently, doesn't he? Isn't it so funny? He is, no, that never happened. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, Christine's just crazy then. She remembers everything wrong and she's just insane. Like, stop. It's so apparent, it's so apparent. This is what I remember. I was interested in the family, not in the man. That's been your mantra. But it became about the man and not about the family. And that I think is my angry place. That's the reason I'm struggling with this. 
is because we've invested and invested and invested. And it wasn't about the family. It was about the man. And this is my frustration. And it's also my accusation. I'm angry that you weren't willing to invest in the family, but you were only interested in what I could do for you, me as a resource for you. It's so, I, ah! it's so upsetting because we've seen her help the family. We've seen her, she had a job. She was providing, she was helping raise Janelle's kids. I've watched, four, this is the fourth episode I've watched and I can tell Christine has contributed. And, and I know men like him that at the end when, when, the, when the divorce is coming, they're like, I have done everything for you and you have done nothing. They act like the woman has literally not done a single thing to benefit their life. Yet they've been married to the girl for 20 plus years. Like, really? So you're just married to someone who's not benefiting you at all? Okay. Okay. Who's the real idiot here, then? <laughs> I, I, oh, it's just a way to, like, tear her down. And he's, I hate this. And it breaks my heart because now we're at this point where it's just over. Oh, it breaks your heart because, uh, let's rewind this. I'm angry that you weren't willing to invest in the family, but you were only interested in what I could do for you, me as a resource for you. As and it breaks resource. my heart, because now we're at this point where it's just over and it's done. I thank you for coming into the family and helping me sort of gather up this mess that I was in. It stings when he says that because it's directed at me, probably. You know, when Janelle came into the family, I was jealous. I was sad because I didn't have the time with him that I had had prior. Remember I was telling you guys this, and I think it was episode one we were reviewing, and I was like, the first wife always has it worse because they get to have that taste of loving the man and being in love and, and being the only one, the apple of his eye, and then you watch him. It's like your heart getting ripped out because you watch him fall for another woman. She's explaining it right here. Every first wife goes through this unless she was never in love with him to begin with. You know, I was young. I was not yet <laughs> fully mature. Uh, nor was he or her, you know? And I mean, we just, we're dealing with a lot of new situations. And so he's like, oh, let's get Christine and come and save the day. You know, and that, that stings. I also thank you for ripping off the Band-Aid so quickly because it was never going to work if it all had to be about me as you had always indicated it wasn't. I think that's a low blow. I think she was about the family. She's been about the family. You're leaving. I almost feel like it's a favor too. Ugh. But I, I don't know because I'm still upset because I'm trying to figure this out. This is awkward. They're sort of hashing out their relationship in front of us. <sighs> How is this awkward? You guys are all in the same relationship. You know what I mean? Is, is really... He, it's better for him to go talk about her behind her back to you guys. Come on. I'd rather be in front of everyone. <laughs> I believe that there's always a chance for a miracle. People go through, like, get close to divorce and then change their mind all the time. She may say she's divorced, but in my head, technically, she's not. And so I'm just kind of like, well... Maybe they can talk this out. In my head, they're still married. Okay, well, every kid who has divorced parents says that, but that doesn't make it true, okay? Well, in my head, you're still together. You are still together, whether you like it or not. <laughs> she sees Christine with another man. La, 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 la. <laughs> well, maybe they, they can talk this out. So. Don't word it. Just think about what uh -huh. I said. No. Um, Soak in that. Well, you better not give me any rebuttal. Just listen to what I said. I mean, I, I don't know who this patriarchal guy is because this is not the guy I was married to for years. I did love it. Here's what I think. I'm not in the relationship, so I can't say for sure, but I think that they all just didn't see. Cody's been like this all along. Cody's been like this from day one. They just didn't see it until now. When I finally opened my eyes to the cult, the cult was always uh sexist the cult was always 
um, promoting men and putting down women, uh, I just didn't notice until I did notice. <laughs> this isn't the cult that I joined. No, it was, and I didn't join it. I was born into it. You just finally develop this sense of self-worth and realize, you know what? I deserve better than this. I did love the idea of a family, of having sister wives, of raising kids together. If you and I don't have a good marriage, and like, it's, it's an important part of a plural family that each relationship and each marriage is strong too. We always talk about this spokes in a wheel and when there's a spoke that's broken, how do we keep it going? And so I stayed. But I made it about the family. I did so much for the family. It was, it was all about having family functions and family get-togethers and family parties. My house was always open to everybody. I loved the big family activities that we had. The big family is great, but when you feel like you're a minimal person in Cody's big picture, and you really don't even matter in the big picture, it changes the perspective on everything. I've been heartbroken for years. For years I've been heartbroken in our relationship. I was tired of being heartbroken. Because you've just tired. No big picture, no. just you. You don't think I stayed for the big picture as long as I did? I guess, I guess. Because I want it to work? Thank you. I want I just it to work? wasn't, I don't know. He can't, he has a really hard time putting himself in other people's shoes. That's his biggest flaw is he just, and, that, and people like that lack empathy for other people because they can't put themselves in the other person's shoes. There's this realization of, um, screw it. You know, it's like, listen, this has been bad for a long time, and I've sat here whining about it breaking up recently, whereas I'm lucky it even lasted this long. I, I'm coming to that realization. If you want it to work so bad, why don't you suggest things that are actually productive, like couples therapy, like maybe I'll, I'll, I, can try, I, can, I can try hard, maybe take some accountability instead of, Oh, like you're, he, he's turning it all around on her. Like you've never done anything. You're just letting, you're just giving up. Like it's all her fault. And he has, he has nothing to do with how things have evolved. I'm so upset about how this has gone down. And I, I don't know the exact reason. I don't know. I think, I think I'm angry because when you get divorced, you're supposed to be. I have no idea what's going on with me. It's an ego. It's a blow to your ego that your wife's leaving you. This is another sign that he's a child. Okay, so first he, he lacks empathy, has a hard time putting himself in other people's shoes, and second, he doesn't even know his own emotions. This, this by the way, has been a long time coming. They talked about it, remember, four episodes ago, and he still doesn't know why he's so angry. Maybe self-reflect, Father Mucker. But I am really upset by this. And if I really boil it down, if I- I am really upset by this, you guys. I don't know why, but I am. And I want you to, I want you to be upset too. <laughs> it feels like after all I have done, I'm being rejected anyway. There you go, rejection. It's an ego thing. He's like, I, I everything, after everything I've done, do, do you see the perm? Do you see this hair? It is not easy maintenance. And, and, and you're gonna leave this? This? Idiot. You idiot. <laughs> and you've done nothing. Nothing. I've never seen you even try to perm your hair not once. <laughs> After all that I've done. I have a question for you, Cody. What is something you've done that the women haven't also done? What? Oh, I have a job and I provide, so do they. Why spend time with the kids? So do they times 10. I have noodle hair, okay? I'll give you that one. But they bear your children. That's something that you've never been able to do and never will be able to do. And you're, you're treating them like <sighs> chopped liver, dude. Grow up. And it's just not rejection for me. It's rejection for some of my kids and my other wives. You don't get to speak for her. It's not rejection for the kids. She still loves the kids. Stop speaking for her. Let's, let's, let's be real. You're just upset that a woman left you. That a woman didn't treat you like royalty, like you, you deserve.
curious in all of this, it seems like my relationship with all the kids, the adult kids is really off too. Have you been talking to the adult kids about this? No, we don't, we rarely, no one wants to talk about this. I think your relationship is off with your kids because of COVID, not because of me. Bull, you're telling them. Should a parent talk to their kids about what's going on in the relationship? I think there's obviously negatives to making the kids too involved. Like you never want it to feel like the kid's responsibility, but you also don't want the kid to feel like you're like blindsiding them. Anyway, this is just my own dialogue for what I would ever do if I had kids and I was getting divorced. <laughs> it's Christine telling them. She's running to this person, to this person, to this person, to this person to complain about the relationship. She's playing a game. She's been playing games for years. I just call bull So she's not allowed to have any outlets to talk about her relationship with you except for you. Got it. Typical, typical narcissist tactic is to uh, isolate your victim and make them feel guilty for talking to anyone else about, about their relationship. Make them feel like they can't have relationships deep other than yours. That's such a typical narcissist thing. In a relationship, you should be allowed to vent about the relationship to, to your friends, to your peers, because you need perspective. You need to feel like you're, you have support systems other than this person who could be a predator. <laughs> Like, and, and the person should be supporting that. He's so, he screams red flags, you guys. I cannot figure out why I'm so angry. I mean, it is sad. It I've is seen sad. you, I've seen you grieving, Cody, like in a way I've never seen you grieve before. You disguise it, but it's grief. I don't know how to explain it. He's just been off. He's, he's gone to an, a more angry place quickly, quicker than he ever did. I finally realized it's a, it's a grieving process for him. I guess maybe I'm mad because I feel like an investor who poured everything, you know, that he had into something and, and then, you know, it just didn't work. In our marriage. You have beautiful kids. Come on, there's positive sides to this, stop. In our marriage, I was putting so much effort. I was holding her hand, I was kissing her. Well, I wasn't in love. That that was the effort. I was holding her hand. I was kissing her. I was in love with her. I was like, oh, the whole time I was picturing Robin, but I did it, you guys. I did it for her. That is so many things wrong with that. If I have to explain why that's wrong to you, Cody, oh my God. If I have to explain why that sentence you just said is so f***ed up, one, you should never be white knuckling it through, kissing your ugly wife, like secretly hating that you're with her, counting down the seconds when you can go be with someone else. Christine doesn't deserve that. No one deserves to be, does it, okay, raise your hand in the room. Everybody, every, okay, hello, everyone. Hey, you in the back. This is important. <laughs> Raise your hand if you would want to be in a relationship with someone who finds you so unattractive that they don't even like kissing or hugging you. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, you can get out. <laughs> you in the back. You're weird. That's the effort you put into it? That effort, in case you didn't know, that effort made Christine's life worse. So, good job. I was doing it as my duty as a husband. And, and she's not either. I mean, she quit loving me years ago. And now that we're here. You know why she quit loving you? Because she could tell you didn't love her. She could tell it wasn't real. Why are you blaming this all on her? Take some accountability. It was my, it was my duty as a husband. This could have all been avoided if everyone would have just been fucking for real. Be fucking for real. I'm just so upset because it's like, it's, it's not the breakup of two people. It's the breakup of a family. How did he have a relationship with four women with this like lack of self-awareness? It's appalling. I'm struggling today, so I'll do better another day. This whole thing that she's telling us today is just a shock. I don't know, today I just know that I'm not, I'm not, completely like calm I'm struggling some days I get really like hey we'll figure this out 
we'll figure out some way to still make it be cohesive and workable and that kind of thing. I don't know today. It's a strange world to be going through a divorce, I guess, while you're married to somebody who's loyal and loving. But she's been going through it with me. She came in this family cap in hand saying, please accept me, please accept my children. She, with me, is being rejected. Done with a lot of anger and mourning. Why is it all about you guys though? Like, can, can any, can, the only one so far that I've noticed that's taking a step back and taking Christine's feelings in account is Janelle. Like, no one else is taking Christine's feelings into account. They're making it about themselves. They're making it about you're leaving the family. In my opinion, you're still married unless blah, blah, blah. Like, nobody, <laughs> I don't understand how, I mean, yes, I do. You know how I know? Because I came from a cult where that's all it was about. It was all about we need to get to the kingdom of God. And like they would have these analogies of, you know, um, every a car has many parts and we all have to do our part to make the car work. That was the analogy, right? And if you step out of line, then the car's not going to work. So it's very cult-like mentality. Like we all just have to buckle up and do what we're told because we're doing it for the kingdom of God. But like, come on, come on. That, that's not a healthy mindset. Oh, but that's how you get to heaven. Is that what you want to do in heaven? Is that the kind of, like, what kind of a God wants everyone to just blindly follow and fit in so that the car can work and they don't really know what they're doing, but they're doing it and they're just listening to the one above and then they get up in heaven and they're like, I did it all. And then the God, that God is like, good, now, now for your next test. You know what I mean? It's like, God, I'd rather just have this life of getting to learn the person that I am and the body that I was given and, and, and love the life that I have and the world around me rather than fighting so hard to, to play this game that I don't even know if, if I'm going to win. I don't even know if this game even makes sense in the afterlife. Like, I feel like Robin and, and, and Cody are really deep in this polygamy game and Janelle and Christine are like, come on, like, have a heart, you know? It's so common though. People doing things that don't make sense for for a reason that like they think makes sense, but like it's not like logical. Anyway. I don't mean to push you away, I'm just frustrated. You're not pushing me away. I know you're frustrated and I know you're angry and I know it's hard. Hmm. My emotions feel so pathetic that I'm frustrated by it. Plural marriage isn't easy. And on a bad day, you can feel trapped in it. And she's getting out of the... Uh... the lobster bucket. Then be happy. You just called it what it is. Be happy for her. Like, it's like... Misery loves company. That's what it sounds like. Well, we're all miserable, so we have to be miserable together. And then they're like, it's almost like they're jealous that she's getting out. I'm in this really hard lifestyle, partly because of her. And it has been very, very hard, partly because of her. And she's just leaving now. So, okay, I guess I have a question. Like, are you in a place where you just want to go do your thing? And those of the kids that have a relationship with you, you'll spend time with them or whatever. And then the rest of us that maybe you don't have a great relationship with, do we just need to, like, give you your space? Are you interested in some sort of a like trying to work stuff out maybe from the past how many years? I think for right now, I need space. Okay. For right now. I have definitely been mourning the loss of the family culture and 
you know, I, there's this part of me, there's this part of me that has wondered, you know, if, if Cody's not in the picture for her, will it be easier for her to have a relationship with me and my kids? But I do see us getting together for family reunions and I do see us. Yeah, because the kids are still related. Robin's kids and Christine's kids, no matter what, are still gonna be related. Um, it is kind of sweet to see that Robin does care about that relationship and to see that Robin, this, this is the first time I'm actually seeing like genuine, like realness of Robin. Cause I think before I was just like, blah, blah, blah. This is all about you. This is, this is nonsense. The words you're spouting are just, you know, but right now I feel like there's some genuineness to it. And I, but the thing is like, they, they seem to forget that all these kids are related still. Like they're always going to be uh, cousins, no brothers and sisters because they have the same dad. So like, there's no running from it, even if Christine tried to, you know? I mean, maybe, but it doesn't sound like she's trying to. It sounds like she's trying to go back to family in Utah and like, just have a stable life. It's not like she's like, me, me, me. I feel like they're acting like Christine's like, Pfft. And they're like, they're reacting in that way. But Christine's been very like calm about the situation. See us having fun together and... Is that the extent of what you want? Just For a now, family yeah. reunion? For now, yeah. Okay. Is as that... far as the relationships with the other adults, I think Janelle and I are super close, but I'm not that close with the rest of you and for right now I kind of need it that way this is why I really like Christine and Janelle as I feel like they just say it like it is no bullshit this is how it is like I'm close with Janelle like they're not gonna sugarcoat it close with Janelle all y'all's as motherfuckers could die but I love Janelle that my bitch <laughs> Kind of that last little bit of hope sort of dying. My immediate thought was, well, I may as well stand up and leave because there's no point of me being here in this conversation. She doesn't want to work on anything. And I have seen her non-acceptance of Robin. And I have seen her disdain for me through the years. I think that Christine's probably gone through already trying to work on things and it's over. So I think that um, if you wanted it to have worked out, you should have worked on the relationship before. Like a relationship is not, the relationship is not just about Christine like trying to be friends with everyone, okay? Like you also have to put effort into it too. She's treated you like dirt from the very beginning. That's, That's the relationship you have with her. Shut up! No, she hasn't. She just struggled with her own jealousy issues, okay? And that's very normal. She treated you like dirt. I heard her. I heard her. She thinks you're a bitch. Christine thinks you're a bitch. And Robin, Robin's a not... He like waits, grabs his popcorn. He wants them to like pull each other's hair out. And that's the reason I'm angry. That's the reason I'm pissed off. Shut up. Is because... You never tried to have a really good relationship with these other people. And that's the reason I'm pissed off. That's not true. And it's that's just not true. vomiting out of me because I've sat here with it just like Christine, try and do this. You wanted to re renegotiate a relationship with me, but you wouldn't even have a decent one with them. Oh, he's about the kids. That was the easy part. Man. Just the knife in the kidneys over all these years. <laughs> With how much people talked about knife in the kidney, I really thought that somebody accidentally like cut themselves or like like someone was running with a knife and stabbed Cody in the kidneys. <laughs> so I'm a little bit let down. Not, the, oh, that sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. No, I'm, I don't want Cody to get stabbed in the kidneys, but I wouldn't mind if someone like, you know, like gave him a purple nurple or something. You know what I mean? But it, it, no matter what, Cody's just not going to learn anything. Like, if he hasn't learned anything by now, four wives later, 18 kids later, he's not, he, he's a lost cause. And Christine is folding. You know, she's like, I've been, uh, Christine's the one that's invested all this time into this man who's literally standing up yelling at everyone, saying it's a noise from the kidneys. Like, 
she's been married to this toddler for how long? And I bet you, I guarantee you, right now, in this moment, her sitting there watching this toddler man running around talking about getting stabbed in the kidneys, she's like, I am so glad I'm leaving this little boy. I am so glad I never have to look at his curly cues ever again. Like that's why she's so calm, cause she's like, oh, I, this is probably the last time I ever have to listen to this bullshit. This, this ass spewing out of his mouth. The sacrifices that I made. And the sacrifices. I'm sorry, Robin. I don't want you to see me like this. Oh my God. Okay, everybody's made sacrifices. Oh, it's not all about you. And, and lesson, word to the wise, word to anyone in a relationship where they're like, what the hell am I doing? If you feel like every day is a chore, every day putting up with the person you sleep next to is a father mucking chore, it's time to leave. Better off being alone. That's all I have to say about that. The sacrifices that I made to love you. Love should not feel like a sacrifice. This is something I learned after I got my first divorce. First, like I've had seven. After I got divorced. <laughs> my only divorce, by the way. Um, I'll let you know if I get any more. Uh, so after my divorce, I realized if like love should come naturally. The love between a partner, like you and your spouse, your partner, your lover, it should come so easy and so naturally. And you should feel that same love in return. And if it's like sacrifices to love someone and like it's so hard for me to love you, maybe it's toxic. Maybe it's not love. Maybe it's an obligation. Mm, maybe you got toxic doo-doo boing on your hands. Oh, <laughs> just a little bit of doo-doo boing. We all have it sometimes. This is a Pinot Noir and I'm gonna say right now, this is Napa Valley. I'm not liking this as much as the 14 hands Washington one. I'm gonna say that right now. It's a little bit carpa doo, doo you know what I mean? Hang on. Me to love you. Wasted. You know what these women should have done? Stood up and said, Boy, have you lost your mind? Cause I'll help you find it. None of you bitches gotta take this shit. None of you. You don't have to sit there and listen to him do his tantrum. You don't. Walk away. When you're ready to be an adult and act like adult, I'll come back. We can have a conversation. But right now you're having a tantrum. You can have your tantrum, you're allowed to, but I don't have to be here for it. But accountability is what I've been asking for here. And you are running away rather than being accountable. She's the one who lacks accountability? If I have to listen to this father mucker for two more seconds, I'm gonna... The fact that these women have been with him for so long is like astronomical. You're like, I'm divorced. I'm leaving. I'm done with you. You're out of my house. Instead of actually making the relationships work and trying. If you're not trying to be your best self in this relationship or in this family, Oh, oh, and this is you trying? And this, this represent, this, uh, uh, wasted, wasted all my time. This is your best. Really? Really? Oh my God. So some of our best selves can be less than others' best selves? Is that what I mean? As long as you're trying your best. If you're verbally abusing people, it's okay. As long as you're trying your best. Okay. Co Cody Brown logic, 101. <laughs> Wasting your time. Marriage is a call to be better than you are. Plural marriage is a higher call. Marriage looks really good on you, Cody. <laughs> we can all tell. Okay, look, I never tried to treat anybody like crap. I never tried. I never did. But you did. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I, I did. did to. So much. I did. What did he say? He said a swear. And he said a cuss. I didn't mean to. And you admitted to it. And you couldn't correct it. And now we're sitting here with a broken family over it. And you're like the freaking Pied Piper. 
You're trying to take the kids. No, that's with not you. even. You like the freaking Pied Piper over here. Do -do 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 -do. That's the only thing I pictured. I could sit here and dissect everything that Cody has said and give you my point. But we've done this for years. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. She doesn't have to. She was in the relationship for this long. She knows what's best. She doesn't have to explain herself. I'm so sad for her because I feel like for a long time she did like succumb to the manipulation and, 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 and like explain herself and like, like, am I crazy? I'm not crazy. He's crazy. Like this whole like cycle of, of manipulation and verbal abuse that she's going to have to deconstruct after the divorce. Sadly, it's going it, to, it doesn't just end at the divorce. She's going to have to keep going through the cycles of, of the, the, I don't want to call it PTSD, but it kind of is. You, you can't trust the way that you could, tr you, like you, you, you have to heal that part of you. And, and I feel so bad for her, but I also am so happy that she finally hit this point where she's like, I'm done. I don't care if you agree with me. Like I, I, I just want to be happy. <laughs> like I'm so done. But sometimes I feel like women who go through this, they have to be pushed to their f***ing limit to finally realize I give up. I have been through it all. <laughs> so good for her. I'm tired. It doesn't matter. It's over. So thank you. Thank you for coming. It was a blessing. Thank you for me leaving. Because now I'm sitting here trying to find the silver lining. I just hope it's a blessing. It is a blessing. You have beautiful children. Stop. She gave you beautiful children and, and you can progress that relationship with them. I think it's an ego thing and he knows what his image is going to look like in the church being a divorced polygamist. I guarantee you that's on his mind a lot. He's just like, <laughs> he runs away. <laughs> if she can one, I can one too. <laughs> want to sit in my big diesel truck he gets so tall he's so short he has to put the ladder out to climb the, it takes him two minutes to get into it <laughs> i just feel like for the past 14 years i've just been sucking it up with her you know just trying to be a loving then be happy that it's over have a party be like high five christine hope you find a nice man i'll slap his ass when he comes in here you know what i mean like, be a good, supportive person. You've been white-knuckling it, she's been white-knuckling it, and now you're free. Now that she's leaving, I just felt like giving her a piece of my mind without leaving. Good for you. This you're ain't my... Good for you. You're so mature. Father of 18 kids. I just felt like giving her a piece of my mind. Why is that? <laughs> my fault. You did this is what I feel like. I don't care if that's not fair. That's how I feel. She did this. Okay. No one cares how you feel, Cody. She's gonna go around telling my kids that I didn't love her. You said you were never in love with her. You said you, you did your husband duty by holding her hand, kissing her, even though you weren't attracted to her. You said it yourself. It's on national television. I feel like she needs to realize here with this that she wasn't loving me. Thanks, honey. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I've said this before, but their relationship is so beautiful. Ah, they're so cute. I'm not trying to take sides, but I feel like Cody was really harsh. Even though he tried to dilute it a little bit, it seemed very pointed to one relationship. I just feel like that being a good sister wife, it takes both sides. It takes reciprocation. It takes work on all the sides and work on the part of the husband. Janelle has a great deal of sympathy for Christine during this divorce. 
but it's a disappointment. It's a sadness to me because Janelle has shown me no tenderness, no kindness, no empathy. While I'm going through the divorce. I didn't try and be bad for anything. I think. It well, what about me, Janelle? I have one less wife to, to, to praise me. What about me, Janelle? I, I'm losing something too. What about me? Stop. Can she not get some love and support from her sister wife? He's so culty. But you, why, that hurts my feelings that you're being supportive of your sister wife. But you were just saying that you wanted Christine to be supportive of Robin. Make up your mind. It's emotion. I didn't try and be a bad any. It's emotion. This is not just emotions. That response from Cody was not just emotion. That response from Cody was real. And he said some things he probably has been holding in for a long time. I'm glad he said it. I, I, you're glad that he yelled on national television like a toddler? Okay. I don't know who in the right mind would not be embarrassed if their husband acted like that. Like I would be, honestly, if I had the, the, the marriage that, like, let's say at this point in my life, if I was married to someone and they did that in front of a live audience, I would be so embarrassed. I'd be like, I don't, I don't know who that is. I'm so sorry. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Whoa, I'm married to him? No, I don't fucking know what Like, to be married to someone that emotionally unstable is, and, and then to be encouraging that emotional unstable, uh, instability, like, he knew there was a camera there. He, in, in front of everyone. Uh, uh. What is that? If I have sister wives are mad at me, why don't they talk to me instead of talking to Cody? It doesn't help. I know that in our family, every one of us has had a conversation with another one of us about another one of us. It has happened with Robin, with Cody, Janelle, and Christine, like everybody. I learned very early on in my relationship with Cody, venting my frustrations about a sister wife didn't work. It made him angry, it made him upset. It hasn't been the other wives tattling or backstabbing her or anything like that. It's been her telling me how she felt about them. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, as I've grown through the years, I used to be, I used to be in the order, gossip, gossip, gossip. I used to just be like, ooh, she did what? <laughs> You know what I mean? I used to be super, super, and sometimes I still am a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But um, at the age that I am now, what I have realized is the best thing in, in all relationships that I've had to be able to keep myself out of the drama, every time someone comes to me to talk about someone I care about, every single time I'm like, have you told them this? Have you talked to them about how this makes you feel? I feel like they would respect your feelings and want you to tell them this. Because at the end of the day, that's the, that's the reality. I don't know, I feel like I, I'm kind of surprised that I'm saying this <laughs> with these people who are all older than me. These I just, people. I just wanted to double check. You know, it sounds like... Not you guys. Like you guys are young. You guys are hot. You guys are snatched, okay? You guys would never, ever be older than me. <laughs> you guys are so hot. You're just like, I could never. I could never be as hot as you guys. It sounds like you'll continue to have the relationships with the people you're close with and... Um, those that you aren't close with, then they just, you just wanted to stay distant. Okay. All right. For right now. Okay. Sorry to see you go. Through the years, as I have had issues with Christine, I've tried very hard to approach her, to try to talk to her, to text her, to call her. I was met with walls, rejection, um, just her not wanting to discuss things through. I feel like there's been some things said against me behind my back. So do I wanna be friends with someone who complains about me behind my back? Well, not right now.
Can I say something that I feel like happens in every polygamous relationship that I've noticed in the order to? There is so much petty shit that goes on. There's me, 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 me. A lot of the times the husband likes to, likes to cause the drama. A lot of the times the husband likes to see the wives fighting for him. I'm, t I'm telling you that this is not a joke. I've seen men in the order, the cult that I was born in, like they like to see women fighting for their attention. It like gives them this weird rise. I'm not saying that like Cody necessarily does that, but like a lot of the, the different polygamous relationships that I saw would talk down about one wife. And it's really just all insecurities because polygamy brings out every single insecurity that you have. And it just... <laughs> Because you can't trust the man. The man's sleeping around with all these women. So you just get more and more insecure. You feel ugly. You feel gross. And, and you feel like you're never, ever good enough. And so, like, it just becomes this, like, festering, petty relationship. And everyone, it, there's so much hypocrisy. There's, like, there's like, and did you know that this, she did, 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 did. Hi! The amount of gossip and pettiness that goes on in these polygamous cults is astronomical. I'm not like, this is for real shit. And this is part of why I feel so bad sometimes. I feel like I'm doing really good in my life, like just focusing on me and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes I will hear a little bit of gossip coming from the order and I'm like, ooh, because 17 years of my life, that was it. Like, oh, she did what? Oh my God. He said, huh? Uh, you know what I mean? Because that was just like, it was such a small community and there was so much like drama and gossip and insecurity going on. That, and like, and I feel like some small towns are like this too, but I think polygamy just exemplifies it because there's so much competition going on. It's just so toxic. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm feeling right now in this. I, like this feels so much like back in the order. We used to talk shit too. <laughs> we were the best at talking shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think this is one of the saddest conversations I've ever been in. I don't regret leaving at all, though. I still stand firm that leaving is 100% the right thing to do. And moving and getting away is definitely the right thing to do. But I'm sorry I'm leaving a mess behind. Don't say sorry for le leaving a mess behind. Ne not, it's not necessarily like you, your fault, you're leaving the mess behind. You are getting out of the relationship and, and everyone could be adults and be like, okay, hey, we'll, we'll co-parent, everything's gonna be okay, we wanna be supportive. Like if, if everyone could just be like, look, this is a part of life, Christine's moving on with her life, that's fine. But I think everyone's taking, not, not Janelle's per se, but like, everyone's kind of taking this to heart in a way of like, it's so offending them for her to live her own life, which is like, you guys really need to think about why it's offending you so much that Christine wants to live her own life. You should think about that. This is not about Robin. It's not about Mary. It's not about Janelle even. It's not about Cody. It's about you and your kids and what's healthiest for you guys. And, and that's at the end of the day, like Robin and Mary can cry about it, like whatever. At the end of the day, it wasn't working and you can't be like, you need to stay with us. No, be supportive. And, and I'm getting the sense that there wasn't a lot of support coming from Mary and Robin. Um, and that's probably why Janelle and Christine are so close. I don't know. I mean, I'm not in the relationship, obviously, so <laughs> I can't judge, but. So about a week ago, Christine announced to me and the other wives that she was moving, that the house had sold and she was leaving. I guess this became the ultimate awareness for me where I finally had to admit she was leaving it and I had a meltdown. Does he pay, does anyone know this, does he pay like part of Christine's mortgage, part of Janelle's, part of Mary's, part of Robin's? Is that how he, it works? How does this dynamic work? <laughs> I have gotten myself in a very stupid position as far as an independent woman. If I were to leave or want to leave right now, I would have no estate. I have nothing to leave to my kids. My hands are completely tied because everything I have asset-wise has everybody else's name on it too. 
she we already? all are owners of property. Is that a he? Uh, our d names are on different pieces of the property. So we do, we actually all do have an asset. My home does have Cody and I's name on it. Honestly, I gave half the proceeds from my house in Las Vegas to Robin to help purchase this house that she's in currently. Wow. We also at that time pulled a lot of money from the joint family account to help get her into that house. We have a family account and the same amount of money is in it as when we bought Robin's house. And it was okay to deplete at that point to, to pay for Robin's house. And I'm like, we did for Robin. We did for Christine. Why can it not be my turn? Yep. Now we don't have the money. So I'll keep moving forward because I have to think that whatever we're doing is going to blaze the trail for the other pieces. Yeah. I'm in this weird place with my wives. I've got this huge struggle that has gone on with Christine. And what's happened is I'm... I'm most West with, you know, all my wives. I just have so many wives. I just, you know, I can't take them all happy. Why can't they just shut up? And so I'm sitting here just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I know it's just, there's a, there's a disconnect. And in order for her to... Today was the first day of school for the kids. Hi, Ariella. Hi. Hi, so. First day of school. Mommy, first day of school. Mommy. Good job. High five. Ariella is my 18th child. And there is this sense. Did he just say Ariola? I'm not. Did I hear that wrong? Ariola? Excuse me, what did you name your kid? So things are really, really difficult right now with a family. But, you know, Cody and I still have little kids that are going back to school in person for the first time. And you know, I want to have them feel special and like excited about their day and stuff. Hi! Hi, Ariella. Hi, Hi so. Hi. First Hi. day. How was it? Yeah. yeah. Did you make friends? Yeah. Yes. We did get a report from our Ariella's teacher. Ariella, can can some somebody please tell me I'm not the only one to think that that is rude to name your kid Ariella? Come, on. did they not know what Ariella was? They probably didn't. They probably didn't ever get sex education in their cult, but I see why they call her Ari. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, it's fine. I got bullied too. We all get bullied as a part of character development. I got, oh, you're a man, duh. And I would cry as a kid, like, I, I'm not a man, I'm a lady. Hurry, open it, Pop. <laughs> so Cody, especially when they were little, was such a good dad. Like, I can remember a lot of things, like walking in a, a line, probably trying to go brush their teeth or something. I thought Cody was stellar. He did such an amazing job relating to his this kids. This reminds me so much of my Christmases with three moms and all the kids that we had. Oh, there were so many. That's the one good part of growing up in Palimi is you get all these friends. <laughs> You're very social. When each of Cody's kids were born, they all just brought him so much joy. I mean, he loved hanging out with them. You know, he was always a really, really good dad. Let's write your name. <laughs> I think one of the most important parts about me leaving Cody was to keep the good memories that he has with the kids present. He used to wrestle with the older kids all the time. I just think it's important to remember all the good memories that the kids have of their dad. You don't want your kids to have just remember all the negative times that doesn't serve anybody. <laughs> Next time on Sister Wives. Mom, do I know something exciting? Yes. We're gonna live 20 minutes away from each other. <laughs> I want my mom to have everybody say goodbye to her. Is any of the family, are you guys gonna do anything, anything like a goodbye? Are we gonna go to dump toilets on their lawn? Like, what are we doing? What's the, what's the plan? No, I don't think we're doing anything like that. Yes, she's divorcing my dad, but she's not saying, okay, peace out, I'm done with every single one of you. I'm leaving in five minutes. I feel like my life is being unraveled for me. You guys, thank you for coming. Hey, it means a lot to me you came. <laughs> I think this was the worst goodbye that I've ever witnessed. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there is a lot of of
progress that's going to be coming to Christine, so kudos to her. Um, I, t I really just don't like how uh, you really can kind of see how culty the relationship all really was because everyone really was like, well, what about me? What about me crying for themselves, for their own loss, for, for what it's going to do to them? But no one, no one was caring about what it's, how it's affecting Christine. And they're like, well, this is a family. You're breaking up the family. It's reminding me so much of when I left the order, Michael. And they were like, you're throwing us in the trash. You're abandoning us. But I was like, I can't marry my cousin and pretend that this is what I believe in. I can't have kids with him and tell my kids that they have to live polygamy and marry their cousins too. Like, I just can't. But they turn it around and they gaslight and, and, and manipulate to make it seem like didn't like they demonize the person leaving and I really hate that I hate that so much and I'm also really glad that they put it all public because it really shows so much of how the system really is in these cults I feel like Janelle's right following behind her especially with the comments that she made in this episode she was like if I were to leave like I have so much tied up in here I don't even know where to start but I, I really won't <laughs> I really was, was wanting to leave before Christine said anything this was an interesting one. I just am so shocked at the, I don't know why I'm shocked at Cody, but I'm like, why are you raising your voice? Settle down, sir. And he's like, I just wanted to give her a piece of my mind before she left. Okay, you're just solidifying that she made the right choice. Good job, good for you. <laughs> Thanks for making it easier on her. Anyway, um, wow. I love your guys' comments as always. Like. Leave your comments down below. I love reading them. I love, I, I try not to read so much the like big comments as far as like the sister wives ones. Cause it's, I feel like every time I read one of those big comments, I'm like, oh no, it's like a, it's like a spoiler, spoiler. But, um, because of you guys, I watched this knife in the kidney episode and it was interesting, <laughs> interesting to say the least, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you guys have a happy Christmas Christmas season. I don't know if I'm going to see you for Christmas, but hopefully I'll see you. Hopefully you can come stop by. <laughs> we can share a stocking and uh, some gossip, <laughs> some Christmas gossip, family gossip. But if not, I will see you on Sunday for Coldy Cup of Coffee or Patreon. I go live every Monday on Patreon. So I'll leave the links to everything in the description box down below and I will see you next week. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.